Today's Scorched Earth Toys at AnyMoon.com video isn't so much a review, but a product spotlight. If you're not familiar with the KidsLogic 1-6 scale VF1 cockpit diorama and sound system, they began production in 2018 and were produced in four iterations through 2019. Rick's 1J and Roy's 1S were later available from Sideshow Collectibles, I think this time without a sound system, but I can't swear to it. If you know anything about the Sideshow sold versions, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear about it. If premium statues are your thing, check out Big Bad Toy Store through my campaign link below. They have Kids Logic's more recent releases, as well as statues from most of the other premium manufacturers. I need to start this review with a shout out to two amazingly generous friends. First, my buddy Mike, who has been helping me since I started my site, trying to make me less ignorant of actual aviation terminology. When he downsized his pad, he hooked me up with the piece we're looking at today. Unfortunately, it arrived in bad shape. He did a great job packaging the outside, a less great job packaging the inside, and as a result, just about everything was damaged in some way. Sadly, there were chips of resin everywhere. I took the banged up display to another friend for pointers on customizing into a farewell Big Brother version of the cockpit. Earl looked at it and said, I can fix this. And to my amazement, he did. If you are interested in the full restoration he pulled off, I've got a comment below that you can click to see a write-up of the process, and it is mind-blowing stuff. There were so many intricate pieces, like the collar and the fingers of the pilot figure, all the rivet details that had been sheared off, the paint matching, and getting a canopy that I thought for sure was toast and returning it to display ready. It's truly awe-inspiring work and could be really helpful if you need to repair a collectible. So do check that out. And sincere thank you for all of the effort he put into it. And thank you again very much, Mike, for hooking me up in the first place. So what you're seeing now is not a factory fresh 1-6 scale cockpit. It's a completely refurbished one, but it looks as good as new to my eyes. It's huge. And that's why I didn't take the plunge when they were first released. It's more than 90 centimeters long, 64 centimeters tall if you leave the canopy open, and about 36 kilograms. For my American friends, that's three feet wide, two feet tall, and weighs nearly 80 pounds. I think Kids Logic must have gotten a lot of feedback that this thing was too big, and hence they followed it up with a much more reasonably sized 112 scale cockpit. Here you can see it with a DX YF29 toy, and you'll see even the smaller version of this cockpit dwarfs it. When I had this thing on my fireplace mantle, it immediately became a topic of conversation. If you're thinking of doing something similar, you'll need a shelf that's about 36 centimeters deep. These cockpits come with a pilot figure. Mine came with Roy. Here's Roy's face. Not a terrible sculpt, looks pretty good. The Rick figure I think had a visor that popped down from within the helmet. I don't think Roy had that because of the hair, uh, but still good ball joint connection. I had to put a little piece of clear tape on there, so the ball joint had some resistance, otherwise he would just kind of do this all the time. You do have a couple different optional arms. Here's saluting and throttle forward arms. They connect via a magnet, which is nice, and it's a pretty firm connection. Here is the joystick that has a little removable top to it and a little pin. So you put that in there, and then it's going to connect to the cockpit via a magnet there. And we have this other hand then that lets you get sort of a two hand holding the joystick pose. 
So overall, I'm pretty impressed with the Pilot figure. It's also very heavy, made of resin as well. Roy's version of the cockpit also comes with this heat shield cover. Uh, I don't know why you would ever buy a very expensive cockpit and then completely conceal all of the detail. Uh, so my buddy had a, what I thought was an excellent recommendation and I'm gonna give it to all of you because I think you should do the same. Now, mine was broken in shipping and so we've done a little, he's done I should say, because he's the artist and I am the schmuck, but there's laser damage here as if Roy was flying this thing and got beat up by a Quidlun Rao and even perished. Oh, sorry about the spoilers, everybody. But uh, then we took it around and said, what if we could hang this thing on a wall? Because I'm never gonna cover the canopy with it, but it'd be cool to be able to use this. Uh, we tried metal brackets that were glued on first, but then I came by with a Dremel and just put a hole in either tab and ran a wire across there. And it has worked out fantastic. It is a great piece of art for my office. Would be a great piece of art for your man cave as well. So if you got one of these, something to consider. You have no doubt noticed by now that this thing is way too big for my photo booth. So uh, just enjoy the hickory floors, I guess. There is a joystick for use when you're not using the pilot figure. So no disconnection at the top and there's that magnetic connection there, as you can see, pretty cool. Obviously a very good display piece, even without the pilot in there. Here you can see all of the detail throughout. Very impressive stuff. We'll get those lights turned on in just a bit so you can get a little bit more appreciation for all the bells and whistles. Here we are looking at the side and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through my little pet peeves here real quick. First, the rivets. Uh, there's sort of a steampunk vibe happening here where we have a VF1 that's built with 1950s technology or something like that space carbon, late 90s, alien technology, there would not be rivets all over this thing. My other knit is uh, like this emblem here, it's pretty much all of them. You can actually see water slide film and it's a little reflective and in certain lights you kind of get that step up where the film is. It would be nice to see a little higher quality tampo painting on more of these elements. Interestingly, interestingly, there is a removable armor gimmick here. And speaking of steampunk, uh, that is, I believe, where all the steam pipes are. I don't know. Somebody probably thinks this is really cool. I think it's cool that they went through the effort of painting it all and weathering it, but I'm not sure I'm really buying whatever this is would be the detail that would be in a VF1, but whatever. Somebody's gonna find that cool and good for them. The only thing that doesn't have a lot of heft here is the canopy, uh, which is a very light plastic contraption. It has two ways of being installed for either display. You could go in straight and that would be your closed canopy option. Or we can take this and lift it up and install it like that. And there is your open canopy option. One thing I would have liked to have seen somewhere is the pilot name either here or somewhere along the frame of the canopy. Lest you think any area has been skipped for detail, here you can see the very front of the canopy from a low angle. You'd probably never be looking at it this way. Uh, but two things, the speaker grill, nice UN Spacey logo, and then you do get that steampunk detailing within. And again, not the most natural angle. If you were looking at the cockpit from the very back, this is what you get. You could see you have the power in at the bottom, the power that runs up to the cockpit for the light and the sound system, but you also have some nicely detailed work in the back and you even have some lighting effects back here too. So I think it's about that time in the review. 
Let's turn off the lights. Let's get weird. Okay, guys, I've left some lighting on, but here you go. Here is the very back of the vehicle. You can see the blue LEDs underneath, the yellow and the red up on that back section. And now we'll take a tour around it. So here are the cockpit lights. We're gonna talk about the sound system in a moment because you might hear all of that static that's happening. That is very unfortunate. But first I wanted to show you, there's not a lot of blinking lights. There's a nice pulsating. And the fact there's not a lot of blinking is great for display purposes. Here's the view of that LCD screen, which may be the most impressive element of the cockpit. Unfortunately, here's the sound. I've seen a few of these now sold as having faulty sound systems, so I'm not alone. If anyone has had any luck repairing the sound system, please hit me up in the comments section with suggestions. I can't use my lights at all right now because this thing blares static at crazy levels. Best case scenario, there's like a weird thrumming. Like, mm, mm, mm. Uh, but usually after a few minutes that devolves into these crackling sounds that you've now heard. <sighs> Fortunately, Kids Logic dropped the sound system with their new 112 scale cockpit. So subscribe and make sure you get the alert when that review posts. Again, thank you, Mike and Earl. Don't worry, someday I'll get the sound system working too. And thank you to all of you for checking this video out. Give me a thumbs up, really appreciate it. And check back often, more new content on the way. Thanks everybody.